Hey, it's me, and this is Denver's City Park Golf Course. It will be closed for the 2018 season for a $40 million redevelopment. The major controversy surrounding the redevelopment is that it will include a water retention pond that is inextricably linked to CDOT widening I-70 through a low-income neighborhood while managing to cut down 260 trees in the process. But that's not what I want to talk about today. My issues include land use, environmental cost, regular old dollar cost, the 18-hole golf industry's steady demise, and everybody's favorite problem, old rich white men. City Park Golf Course is 150 acres in the heart of one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S. Also, golf courses can't be used for anything else, and not just because of the constant threat of projectiles. They are an incredibly finicky land use that won't stand up to additional foot traffic and are notorious users of pesticides and water. Denver Water publicly shames individual residential users for bad watering habits, while at the same time the city is doubling down on a golf course. I couldn't find hard data on this, but I feel comfortable with the assumption that of all the things that could reasonably go on these 150 acres of urban parkland, a golf course has got to be one of, if not the, most expensive. Not just in terms of construction, but also when you consider ongoing maintenance costs. A quick Google search will tell you that far more golf courses have been closing than opening since at least the 90s. Case in point, less than a mile from City Park Golf Course is the privately held Park Hill Golf Club. It has been operating in the red for some years now and is slated for redevelopment when the current operator's lease ends at the end of 2018. In this excellent infographic by Hun Nurkel and Borg, you can see that the blue represents households that make less than average, and orange represents households that make more than average. So below this line are activities with poorer than average participants, and above it are activities with richer than average participants. Of all the pastimes measured, guess which one has the highest percentage of richer than average participants? I'm not saying that no poor people play golf, because some do. I'm not saying no minorities play golf. Same thing with women and the younger generations. But if you're playing a lot of golf these days, statistically, there's a decent chance you're a rich old white man with nothing better to do. I could do a whole series of videos on the physical and mental health benefits of green space. The physical benefits are more obvious, like decreased cardiovascular disease, but the mental health benefits cover a huge breadth and depth as well. All this is to say that Denver is investing $40 million of public money into building a single-use, environmentally questionable facility for a dying industry on 150 acres of public space in the heart of one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S. And in effect, limiting the considerable physical and mental health benefits of that space to those who are already the most well off. I filmed a different outro for this, but while doing the editing, I figured out exactly what bothers me about the whole situation. The city never publicly considered using the golf course land for anything else uh, that might benefit a broader demographic. So those who might benefit the most, it's not that their voices were heard and dismissed, it's that they were systematically never given the chance to be heard in the first place. So. I want to know what you think. Do you think a golf course is the highest and best possible use of this land? If not, let me know in the comments what you think might be a better option. And thanks for watching.